Hi folks and welcome to the channel and this is episode number 8 of Restoring the Old Tower Room. In episode number 7 we installed this beam and the purpose of the beam was to strengthen the loss of strength of the old oak beams. Now there were a lot of good comments and I owe you some explanations. One comment was that uh, the beam that I installed, although it's in multiple sections, is not overlap. Well, you're right, it is not in full overlap. There's a beam in the middle, but the two outer beams are coming together right here. So they join together, So, and the back is the same. So they are not really overlapping as such. But then again, uh, if you look at all the uh, support points that we have, the walls, the two beams, and the other wall, I think this is more than strong enough. But I'm not gonna argue that overlap beams are stronger. The second point that was raised is that the beam was actually not supporting the old oak beam. In fact, the new beam is resting on the old oak beam. Well, that is not really true. Remember, the intent was to strengthen the old oak beam. And therefore, I have bolted together the old beam together with the new beam. So the old beam is not suspended. One supports the other. And in fact, the two old beams now support each other together with the main beam. So that's a bit the arrangement I did. So it is normal that you see this underneath because that's the way I'm going to hold all of that and clamp everything together. But your point was taken. Maybe I should have explained that I'm not going to suspend the old beam on the new beam. Somebody else made a good point and they said like, well, these rods here, they are carrying all the weight. And you're right. These rods are M14 rods and they do carry all the weight. So whatever weight distribution we have, it's gonna be transferred amongst those rods between the old and the new beam. Now, an M14 rod can take 70 kilo Newton. I mean, this is like 7,000 kilograms. That's a lot of weight, and that's before the rod is gonna snap. Now, that's the rod. Obviously, there is something else that comes into play here. The rod is not gonna snap. The nuts are then getting all the weight, and the only way the nuts can transfer the weight to the beam is through the thread that's on the rod. Now, that obviously is not 7,000 kilograms. That's a lot less. And that's why some people made a very good remark, and thank you for that. Um, why don't you put two or multiple nuts up? Because the more nuts you put up, the stronger it becomes. So that is something I'm certainly going to do. And there were some other comments where people wanted to see the brackets at the bottom side of the old oak beams. And these are the brackets on the bottom. This, of course, is not the final view. We're still going to put a metal tube over this rod so you can't see the thread. And, of course, the beam has to be cleaned up. And that's all stuff we will do today. And then you'll see the final condition of those when the ceiling is completely finished. And then finally, uh, somebody made the rightful remark that me, this guy, is not a structural engineer. And you're right, I am not a structural engineer. I use common sense. And of course, I listen to you guys because that's why I like your comments. There was one more good comment that said, I should have used bigger washers on those beams. And yes, you're right, I should have used bigger ones, and I will probably put some bigger ones up. All right, so uh, what are we going to do now in episode number eight? Well, first of all, we're going to remove the old pine rafters. And then we're going to blast the old oak structure. And now it's time to remove the pine rafters. Uh, these were the rafters that were holding the plaster ceiling. Now, if you work on your own, you always have an issue because if I'm going to cut it on this side, it's going to bend down. It may even fall down. But if I cut the other side, then I need someone to hold this uh, rafter. Otherwise, I can't do it on my own. And that's why I'm going to span a rope from the left to the right in two areas. So whenever I cut a beam, it's going to fall into the rope. So let us do this first. And then we can start cutting. I think this is probably the best approach uh, for this kind of a job. Of course, if you're with two people, it's always a lot better than alone, but I gotta do with what I have. I'm having the rope installed on both sides, so now I can start cutting the beams. 
I just gotta watch out for the nails because I don't wanna cut into nails. That would not be a good thing, would it? When I cut, I'm gonna cut it slanted so that the beam that's gotta come out is gonna rest on the part that's still in the wall. So that's the next one to be cut. And I need to cut one more. There we go. And as you can see, the beams that I've just cut, they are resting actually on the rope or on the piece of wood that's still sticking out. Now let me cut the other side. And now it's time to cut out the rafters on this side. Now, they are nailed in with some big ass nails. So I wanna make sure that I don't cut in the nails. I'm gonna cut a bit away from them, and then I'm gonna try to split these blocks because I don't wanna damage the old oak beam. I think this is about right. So that was number one. Okay, that's number two. And I'm gonna go on cutting all these beams like that and then we'll clean up these remaining parts that are on it. Now this is the part with the big nail in. So I'm gonna try to split that with a chisel. And there's one more nail in the bottom. I know what there is. Now you can see these big nails, and that's the reason why I didn't want to knock it off. Uh, so now we're going to remove the nails. I'm gonna use a small hacksaw and get as close as I can to the nail and give it a cut. And then you can bend it over and it just breaks off. Now I know you still have the little piece in sight but I don't worry too much about it. There we go. And then finally, I will have those flat. There's different ways of dealing with these nails. Some people will prefer to pull them out, but then you have a hole and a risk of damaging the oak. Uh, on the other hand, if you cut them off like I did, or you grind them off and then you knock them back a bit, then you don't have a hole, but you have a nail sitting there. So whatever. Um, I think I'm going to go with my method. And for all these little guys, I'm going to use a good old pliers. Uh, they come out quite easy and don't cause any damage. It's a bit of pulling out because there's a whole bunch of nails in these beams. Uh, the big ones, I'm not going to do it like this. You've seen me cutting them off. I think that's the better approach. All right. See how this is actually a bit rotten here? And we have this all over this beam in this area. That's why we enforced it. Guys, I'm gonna continue removing all the pine rafters now and removing all the small nails. And you've seen how I've done it. And there's a whole bunch of these small nails, but okay, it is what it is. And then I'll come back to you when we're going to blast the ceiling. This is a part of the pine rafters that we removed uh, from the ceiling. It took a bit longer as expected, as always in these circumstances. Uh, but overall, they, they are still in a pretty good shape. It was a very uh, dirty job uh, and dusty. I looked like a coal miner when I was done. But anyhow, now we are ready uh, to continue with blasting the ceiling. So let's start having a look upstairs first of all, look at the beams a bit, see what we're gonna do, talk a bit about the blasting itself, what we're gonna use, how we're gonna use it, and then we do the actual blasting. So we are about ready to start blasting the ceiling. And you can actually see the child beams where are the small outriggers or rafters, and then the big beams that are up there. 
Now the point here is a bit that not all the beams are in the same good condition. You notice that we have placed the brackets in the previous episode, but over here I added an additional bracket, the third one, because there is something in the back here which I didn't really like too much. There's a bit of a hole in this beam, and that's the hole I was referring to, and it's about two inches deep. So after blasting, this may become a polyester job. The real condition of the old beams will only show up once I've blasted them. Now I'm going to be very careful with blasting so I don't damage too much. But there is a lot of local, I would say, on the surface rot on it. Uh, it's all dry, of course, and I know dry rot does not really exist, uh, but that's how we call it. And this beam right here, you might have noticed that I have a third bracket on here and I actually placed a metal plate on top of it. That was not initially intended. Those two brackets, they were on already in the previous episode, but I added this extra one because there is a hole in this beam on this side and I don't like that area. So now I tried to uh, make that a bit stronger. You will need a certain amount of equipment if you're planning to blast your ceiling. You will need, first of all, a compressor, sufficient hoses, the blasting kit itself, a dryer and protective gear, and of course you will need the media itself, which is over here. And I'm going to go quickly through all these things, so it gives you kind of an idea of what is uh, required if you decide to abrasive or abrasive blast uh, your woodwork or whatever you're going to blast. So first of all, a word about the compressor. Blasting requires compressed air, so you're going to need a compressor that can deliver sufficient volume of air at a certain pressure. Now, how much that volume is supposed to be depends on the nozzle that you're going to use. Now, there's different types of nozzles, and this is a nozzle, and that is actually the nozzle. And if I turn that, you can actually see how small that hole is, and that's what determines the volume that your compressor has to deliver in combination with the pressure. This is a three millimeter one, but I have bigger ones. The one I have fitted is a four millimeter nozzle. We'll look a bit closer to this in a few seconds. Now, depending on the nozzle size and the pressure you want to blast and the media you're going to use, you will have to select the proper compressor. Now, the specific compressor can deliver 1200 liters per minute, which is more than sufficient to feed a four millimeter nozzle at seven bar. Now, I'm not going to blast at 7 bar at all on those old oak beams because that would destroy them. But it's something to consider, so I don't think that your little home compressor is going to cut it. That won't work. And you're better off oversizing uh, your compressor than undersizing it. You can rent those, you can buy those very cheap as well, a second hand. This is a second hand one I bought a few years ago and it just works great. Uh, it's reconditioned and all that. Um, it runs you around three to four thousand euros to have a decent one. If you rent it, I don't know, it depends where you live, it's probably around 150, 200 a day or so, but then you have to go and get it, and it's always something you have to plan it. So it's better to get your own secondhand one, do the job, and if you don't need it anymore, you can always sell it. So that's the compressor. Now let's look at some of the other things you're gonna need. You're also gonna need a blasting kettle, and I'm using an Ibix 9. It's a very small one, but good enough. It doesn't contain a lot of media inside. And by the way, media is the stuff you blast with. You fill it up through this hole here, just put it in, close it up, and then uh, you can actually start blasting. Uh, this is the blasting gun with the hose, and this is the nozzle, as we looked at before. Uh, important on this one is that you have a lifeline. So this is a filter that will feed air into your helmet, your protective gear, because that's what you're gonna need. And then, of course, you have a pressure adjustment over here, so you can actually adjust the pressure for the blasting. Um, you don't adjust it on the compressor, you adjust it on the kettle. All right, so now let's have a look at something else, which is probably the most important part. And this is an air dryer, the most important part of all, because if you compress air, air is getting warm. And you all know the effect. If you sit on a terrace in the summer with a cold soda pop or a beer, the glass gets wet on the outside, you get condensation. And the same thing is happening inside your hoses. The hot air is inside, outside it's a bit cooler, and you get condensation 
inside the hoses and that's going to clog up your system. So if you're ever going to go and rent an air blasting system, always make sure you have an air dryer with it. Uh, the air dryer has to be adapted to the volume of the compressor, obviously. It has a lot of filters on it. This is the pre-filter, which is going to um, take out all the impurities and water out of the air which is incoming into the cooling system. And then you have more water separation and oil separation filters uh, coming out. And this is actually going to your blasting system or your blasting kettle. Don't forget that one. So make sure you turn that on at least half an hour in advance. You can best compare like it's a big fridge. That's all what it is. You shouldn't be blasting without protective gear. And this is a great helmet with a great visor on it. And there's a cap around it, as you can see. And in the back, you have air incoming from your kettle. And the kettle has that nice filter that I showed you. So you're guaranteed to have a little bit of overpressure, not a lot in this helmet, so that keeps the dust out. And it's very comfortable to wear and it's very safe. So get a helmet, guys. Uh, that's the best recommendation I can ever give you. And now we need to talk a bit about the blasting media. And this is the stuff I'm now just pouring into this bucket. I am using a blasting media called Garnet and this is a 350, the finest one you can get. You can actually see it's almost like dust and it has very small, sharp little edges, but it's perfect for this kind of work. There's all kinds of types of media you can get. Uh, you can get glass beads, you can get aluminum oxide, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but this to me has always worked the best. Um, real blasting uh, with sand is no longer allowed because you can get a disease from it called silicosis. I haven't talked about the hoses, but obviously you have to have the right amount of hoses and good quality. These hoses are actually quite good. They are very light, uh, so I like those. And the blue hose is actually my lifeline, which is going between my helmet and the outlet of my blasting kettle. Now, a little bit about what I'm going to do. So, I'm probably going to start blasting the beams with a pressure of 2.5 kilograms. I think this is around uh, 35, 30 psi and I'm going to use a nozzle of four millimeters and then I'll see how that goes. I may increase the pressure or not. It all depends how much wood is taken off because I don't want to take too much wood off. I want to preserve it as much as I can. I just want to clean it. So let me rig all this up and then uh, we can start blasting. So let's fill it up with some diesel. So let's see if we can get this baby started. And that's exactly seven kilograms, so we are good to go. This is an old beam that I recovered from the ceiling, so I'm gonna to try to clean it and see how good or how well it goes. And I will adjust the pressure accordingly to see uh, up to what point I have the best result. And I think this is looking quite all right. Now this area is a lot worse, so let's try that out. And I think this is okay. I'm not gonna blast harder. Uh, it took most of it off, it cleaned it up. Of course, it's not like you're gonna sand it or you're going to put it to a planer. That is not gonna happen. This is a piece of the new oak beams and I'm gonna try to clean it. I increased the pressure a bit to about seven kilograms. So let's see.
think this will be quite all right as well. So I guess I can get started. I will demo one area and then I'm going to put my protective gear on and continue to work. So, as you can see, this is working pretty well. So far, I've done just a few test runs on the beams and it looks like they're gonna clean up quite nicely and fairly quickly as well. Uh, it doesn't do any damage to the beam. I think the Garnet 350 grit is really nice to work with. I have done it without my mask uh, or my protective gear. Now I'm gonna put it on because that's important. And of course, I'm going to turn off the camera because I don't want to have my camera spoiled with all this um, garnet inside. But I will have my uh, GoPro running. And once we are all done, uh, we'll have a closer look. And this is the final result. It took us quite some time to sandblast, but now it's all complete and the beams are looking pretty much all right. And this is the end result. After five hours of blasting, I think it looks quite all right. And even the old beams turned out to be quite good. This is a close-up of the main beam, and you can see they turned out to be quite all right. And this is probably the worst spot that I have on the beams, and that's where that hole was. But that even turned out to be not too bad after it was blasted. But I'm still happy that I have the metal bar supporting it with uh, three uh, brackets around it. And to clean all the beams, I did not use more than 75 kilograms of garnet. So folks, uh, this is the end of this video. Uh, it's time to stop. Uh, it's around 8 o'clock in the evening now uh, and I still have to get my dinner and a bath. But in the next video we're going to prepare the planks that will go on top of uh, the ceiling. And in fact we'll start installing the planks. And then after that we'll start working on the walls. I have to disappoint you about Old Rusty. I still miss a few parts for the engine and they should have arrived last week, but they didn't with the Corona crisis. So I'm still waiting for that. Hopefully I get them this week because otherwise you would have had an Old Rusty video this week. But I can't help it. That's what it is. And hopefully uh, you are a bit patient for that. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.